Today's episode has the final two Champions League group stage games. We need a win and a loss to get third. Can we do it? Let's find out. Yes, hello, welcome into Living Sports here for another episode of Glory Hunter on Football Manager 22. Here with Man United, we are still trying to get ourselves into the Europa League. So if you have enjoyed the series so far, if you are enjoying the whole shebang of Glory Hunter, please leave a like on the video. It really does help us out. And if you are new around here, hit that subscribe button. It's a bit weird at the moment. We're doing something strange here in Glory Hunter, but subscribe and it will get back to normality. Hopefully by the time we get to the next episode. If you haven't been following along what we're trying to do at this moment in time, we've already won the Champions League with Manchester United. We did that last season, but we're in the Champions League group stage yet. Again, we don't need to win that trophy again. We do need to win the Europa League, however. So we're going to try and finish third in our Champions League group to drop into the Europa League to then try to win the Europa League with Manchester United. That's why the last few episodes, there's been some strange formations and strange results going on. On. We've also already won the Premier League, so I'm not showing any Premier League games, but we do need to win the FA Cup still with Manchester United. So the next episode will be FA Cup third round time because that happens just at the start of Jan. You can see it poking out down the bottom of the fixture list there. So once we get these two Champions League group stage games over with, hopefully drop down to Europa League, hopefully don't get sacked, that's the most important thing, we can then try and win the two cup competitions we haven't already won. That's where we are, if you haven't been following along. Let's get into it. And, uh, and yeah, we have Club Bruges today and then Sporting. You can see we are currently in third position. Five points behind Sporting, three ahead of Club Bruges. So the thought says, beat Club Bruges today. And if Sporting managed to not win against Inter, when we play Sporting in the next one, we'll play our throwing the Champions League formation against them, we'll come third and we'll get in Europa League. That's the plan. Anyway, let's go and we'll try to smash Club Bruges this time around. The last time we played our 4-2-4 formation with no strikers and we'd managed to draw now now with them. So you'd have thought playing an actual team would do perfectly fine and we'd win this one. And stupidly, of course, Sporting couldn't have beaten Inter Milan there because they played earlier on. They lost 7-0, so they definitely are not going to get anything against Inter Milan. So you can see, looking at the group stage, they've already played five games. So a win for us today, and then a loss or a draw against Sporting the next one, means we are in third. We're in Europa League, and we've got a chance to go and win the competitions we need. We've got injuries to Michelle, Stansfield, and Coop Miners. I'm not quite sure when the last time was updated during injuries. They're the ones who currently have injured. So they can't play today. So this is the team we're going to use. Henderson in goal. Fafana, Mustafa, Leveramento and Burke are the back four. Ndidi, Bellingham and Ravella playing in midfield. Niang, Durand and Ilié the front three. Ilié is on double figures already this season. Let's see if he can score some more. He's not, I don't think he scored any in November so far. Let's see if he can score some today. I know the last few episodes have been weird. I promise we'll get back to some normality in the next one. And I, if some of you think it's maybe against the, the kind of morals, I don't know, of the series, you know, then so be it. But I, I thought this would be a good way to try to get the Europa League as we head in with Fafana. He scored a few goals in the last episode. He scored another one here. But I just thought that'd be the best way. Try and get as many competitions done as we can. If we can finish it before 20 seasons, that would be ideal. You know, it's just the 20 seasons is the time limit. We will... Uh, we will Obviously, have lots of other trophies we have to still try to win, even if we do get the Europa League in this one. But it'd be great to try and get all the European competitions over with, and we just have to concentrate on the domestic competition, or the two domestic competitions with each, uh, with each club that we go to in France and Germany. We also have to win the World Cup at some point. So, what's just happened there? I, <laughs> I am absolutely speechless. Um. Yeah, we still have to win the World Cup, I was mentioning, with an international side. But while I was talking about that, the goalkeeper's kicked it out. We've headed it back in. Duron has it, and he gets slide tackled, and the ball goes in. Oh, that's an unfortunate on goal for Williams. We're up 2-0, though, early on, and this should be a fairly easy result for us. But, yeah, so we still have to, obviously, 
win the French League and Cup. We spent two years with Monaco and didn't win any of them when we were there. We have to win the German League and Cup. We have to win the World Cup. And we also have to win the FA Cup in England. And we also have to win the Europa League. But I'm hoping this season we can get both of those done, the FA Cup and Europa League. And it's just five trophies to go over the last nine years. We'll see, we'll see if that happens. I was expecting us to win the FA Cup last year and we didn't. So I'm not counting my chickens just yet. As we have another highlight on the, the 25th minute here. Bellingham for to Ely. He can he get himself on the score sheet? He can indeed. Lovely finish. Good play from us there. This could be a cricket score if it keeps going like this. I just noticed we had three shots, three on target, three goals. We've now had another shot since then. But we had a 100% success rate with our shots there. This is pretty impressive. It's not going to be a cricket score, I don't think, because we've got to the uh, the half time. It's still 3 0, but uh, it's a dominant performance. Second half has begun. We're now 62 minutes in. This is the first highlight in this second half as Ravella plays it all the way back to Mustafa, who comes forward on the left hand side, finds Berkey, reaches the byline into Niang. Lovely, lovely goal for us there. Mamadou Niang with his sixth of the season and assists for Berkey. Berkey's kind of struggled this season. I feel he's not. Been as good as you'd have thought for a hundred million pound player, but he's getting there now. I think he's getting himself involved in the team a little bit more. He's getting you know better performances, and that was a good assist from him there as he bring on Lamptey for Livermento in the right back position. And there's just over ten minutes to go as Bucky has it again. He launches it forward toward Durand. He's been pretty good as well. Durand brings the ball back. Niang, oh what a chance from Niang there as he receives the ball again. And a third time lucky. He comes in field, plays it to Lamptey. That was a chance, though. Yeah, Berkey's been quite good in that left-hand side. Duran, I must say, he's been pretty good as well. He's been playing a little bit instead of Sancho recently because he's uh, he's been scoring quite a few goals and getting into some good goal-scoring positions. I expect Tomine's going to come on for Berkey, but Berkey's got one last chance here. He plays in Rovella, who's asked to leave. He's on the, the he's, he's been transfer listed because he wasn't playing enough, but with Stansfield picking up his fairly long-term injury, Ravella's getting a bit of a run in the side now, so we'll see if he changes his mind. He's asking price is 103 million. So if we do get that for him, we'd probably take that for someone who's a player off our bench. As the time's ticked down here, we have won 5 0. That was a dominant result. That puts us comfortably in third position. All we have to do now is not beat Sporting in the last game in this group stage, and we will progress into the Europa League. So you never know, there might be some injuries between them and then. We've got three games in the Premier League. Burnley, Everton, Southampton. You don't need to worry about them. We are currently battling at the top of the Premier League ourselves. Liverpool and Man City having a pretty decent fight alongside Tottenham up there. Again, we've already won it, so you don't need to worry too much about that. We'll see you for the last Champions League game in but a moment. And we're going to try to lose it. Well, before we get into the second game of today's episode, we do have the uh, FA Cup third round draw. Let's have a look at the team, see who we draw. We are away to Swindon, right down the bottom there, you can see it. Away to Swindon, who are currently in League 2. That should be a fairly easy, easy game. You'd hope so, anyway. That'll be in the next episode, certainly. But we've got the second game of today's episode coming up in just a second. And we just need to make sure we do not beat Sporting. And we are through to the Europa League. And a chance to win that European competition. Right, here we are. We're back to our throwing the Champions League formation. The 4-2-4 with no attacking players on the pitch at all. Uh, we have had to rotate the side a little bit compared to the normal backup side. Because Coop Miners has got an injury. Um, so we've brought in Stansfield who's coming back from his injury of his own. Uh, so give him some time in the midfield. So even though he's very, very good, it should still not be enough for us to win this game. That's the hope anyway. So it's Ballard and Gold, Dorrington and Embetta, the two centre-backs, with Lamptey and Escudero either side. McTominay and Ndidi are going to play in behind Willer and Stansfield. Niang and Nusa are going to be on the wings. There's lots of goals in this team, but not with the f way that we play in this one. Um, yeah. We, we, we play part of the bus, we play long ball, we play low line of engagement, and yeah, we just do not tr try to attack, basically. And that's got to be the way that we play this game in an attempt to lose it. Will he call him as the referee again? I'm not sure why he referees so many of our games. We're in the hail in two degree weather here at the start of December, end of November, whenever this game's currently being played. So, um, 
Yeah, I, it's not sort of weather that I imagine sporting are used to playing in. Uh, used to be playing in, you'd imagine, coming from Lisbon. But nonetheless, they do have a chance on this right-hand side. So long as we don't win, we drop into the Europa League. And then we have to work out, or find out, I should say, if we get the sack or not. As Toussaint plays it over to Asensial and Despadov and shot. And look how many men we have in the middle of the park. You just can't break through there. So many players we have in the middle of the field. They're trying to go down the line though. Shot, ball in, headed in by Colombo and saved by Ballard. Sam Ballard, did, I bet he did not think he'd be getting himself three, three or four games in the Champions League this year. But indeed he is, the 18-year-old goalkeeper who came through our academy, who we brought up as a backup last year after Galini got injured for a while. He's our third choice keeper, and I think what's his third? Of, I say I think it's his third game. He has uh, third, fourth, fourth, fourth game. He's played in the Champions League, so uh, it's, it's good experience for him. Um, maybe not the reason you'd be hoping he was playing, because I'm deliberately trying to lose the game. But nonetheless, a good experience for him. As Nusa heads the ball on to absolutely nobody. Because there's nobody there, because we are all in our own half, basically, here. We get one man in the opposition half, and now no one's in the opposition half, as we are sitting so deep here, and we're not engaging at all, as Roma's in behind in Colombo, and it's cleared away. And somehow, somehow, we're holding on. Remember, a 0-0 draw will do it for us. We'll come third with a 0-0 draw, and that would be good. That would put us in the Europa League. There's only been two shots in this first half. This has been pretty boring for all the fans, which we expect it to be boring. But I thought maybe Sporting would do something a bit different, or at least something a bit exciting. I, I, f I fully expect us to not do anything, but I say I thought Sporting would do something. We're holding on, and as it stands, we are going into the Europa League. It's a free kick for Sporting here on the edge of the box, and Kunku will hit it, and it's a good save by Ballard there. What a save that was from him. Even though we are trying to throw this game, he's still <laughs> keeping us... Uh, level pegging with them as Baliga will have a free kick of his own for the left hand side now. And step up, there's five men in the wall here, and it's another good save by Ballard. He's been absolutely outstanding in the goal. Two great saves there. Here comes a corner ball, and from Nkuku it's headed over. 15 minutes to go for us to not score, and I think that's fairly safe to say that's going to happen, seeing as we haven't had a shot yet in the first 18 minutes. Let's see what happens in the last 10. They'll ball into the middle. It's cleared away by us, but only as far as Goku. And what a save from Ballard again. He's going to get himself mad of the match if it keeps like this. Wow, absolutely outstanding. He's had the three great saves so far in this one. But a 0-0 draw is enough for us. It, in fact, it's nearly too much for us, I'd say, as well as it doesn't win his header there. And Sporting, at the end of this game, are going to try and get themselves a winner. But McTominay has it. Back to Lamptey and Dorrington. And indeed, and it's nice football. And then we launch it forward and there's no one there. And we give the, <laughs> the ball straight back to Sporting. Imagine paying money to go and see Man United play like this at Old Trafford. Imagine how much money it would cost for a ticket for the Champions League and you get to watch Man United play like they are here. As that was a headed chance. Escudero's giving away a penalty, it looks like. Ballard has a chance to make four outstanding saves in this match if he saves this penalty. Or it's going to be 1-0 to Sporting. Let's see what happens. Baliga with it. He'll step up to take the penalty kick. Can Ballard keep it out? Can he? No, he can It's 1-0 to Sporting. And we are losing this game, which is fine because we'll drop into Europa League like we want to do. We just have to hope now that we keep our job. And that is full time. We've lost 1-0. We'll go to the dressing room. We'll say that wasn't good enough. And we'll advance on. And we'll see if we're still Manchester United manager. Or if we have thrown this away and are being sacked after this game. Let's find out. We haven't qualified for the Champions League. We've qualified for the first knockout round of the Euro Cup. Or the Europa League as it is here. Oh, let's have a look at the club vision. It's a C plus at the moment. We failed the reaching the final of the Champions League. We'll continue on to the next day to see if it sorts itself out. We'll send the assistant. I don't want to talk about it at the press conference. Are we still in charge? Let's have a look at job security. Stable. It's stable at this moment in time. That's not something I was expecting. Arsenal have just signed Antonio Conte as their manager after they sacked Klopp earlier this season, which means Villarreal jobs become available again. There's lots of jobs available at the moment, actually. 
if it wasn't for the fact that we'd already been at Villarreal and got all the stuff done in Spain, that'd be a good job to go to with the current climate. Well, uh, it looks like we've got away with that. At least for the moment we have. The draw for the first knockout round of the Europa League is made on Monday. We're on the Wednesday at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll play through the next league game and we'll get to that and we'll finish off this episode with the draw for the Europa League first knockout round. Let's see who we get. Right, here we go. Just to finish off the episode, the draw for the first knockout round of the Europa League. Let's just put an automatic draw on. Let's see what teams come out the hat and see who we have to play. Real Madrid are down with us, so that's going to be nice and easy, isn't it? What a team to drop into this with us. They play Galatasaray, Rapid Vienna play against Zenit St. Petersburg, Celtic play against Atalanta. There's just 10 teams left to draw. Leipzig are another great team. We played them in the semi-final of the Champions League last year. They play Dinamo Zagreb, Panathinaikos play Antwerp, and we play Olympique Marseille. Well, that's a nice easy one as well, isn't it? Leon are playing Porto, which means that Besiktas play Valencia. That's going to be a very tough one indeed. Look at the teams I've done here. I thought this was going to be an easy one. I walk in apart, but we've got Real Madrid and Leipzig down, and we've actually drawn a tough one up against Marseille. If we have a look at the other teams who are through, they're the ones that finish first in these groups, they're the ones that we have to play up against, we've got Leicester St Etienne, Borussia Mönchengladbach Juventus oh, maybe this wasn't the greatest of ideas, Levante, Everton Brentford and Rangers there's a lot of good teams in this, this is going to be exciting indeed and very, very interesting you can see that fixtures have been rearranged these games will happen back to back at some time in February indeed they will so we'll have some FA Cup games before that one, but we play up against Marseille in a couple of months' time in that first knockout round of the Europa League. If you have enjoyed this video, say we managed to lose enough games in that Champions League that we got into the Europa League, please leave a like on it if you have enjoyed it. We've got through the weird stuff where we're not looking to win all the time. Now we're looking to win every single FA Cup game, every single Europa League game. And we're going to win those two trophies this year. That's the plan anyway. So please leave a like if you have enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So you do not miss a thing with this FA Cup and Europa League running that's coming up. And until the next one, which will be the FA Cup third round against Swindon. See you then.